California, it's one of those places on earth where every day is a gorgeous day. And it's a border city, it's a multicultural city, and also multi-interest city. And we have one day, and I'm going to show you around, and today is going to be amazing. La Jolla is one of the most scenic oceanfront communities that is surrounded by rocks and caves and the relentless ocean on three sides. Nature here is very dramatic and artistic and attracted many creative souls to settle here and build homes and museums and shops and galleries and restaurants. And it is here in La Jolla where Dr. Seuss wrote 48 of his books, including Cat in a Hat, How Grinch Stole Christmas, Green Eggs and Ham. But his favorite Lorax, Lorax was about a greedy wanzer, businessman wanzer, who built a business uh, at the expense of these trees and those who depended on trees. Seuss was worried that people will overbuild and destroy the beautiful and wild La Jolla. And this was the tree behind the inspiration of Lorax. It's amazing how a tree looks in reality and how it looked in his imagination. Sadly, the tree collapsed in 2019 from termites. People actually could not save it. The nature of La Jolla is incredible. In some places, the waters are rough. And if you're thinking about the day at the beach, keep that in mind. And a funny story. So a philanthropist Ellen Browning Spritz, she built this wall because the water here is so rough. So she built this wall to protect it from waves so kids uh, of this community could come and swim here. But guess what? It was taken over by seals and every December through May they come here and they mate and have their babies. So, sorry kids. San Diego officially became part of the United States in 1848, just a year before gold rush madness has begun. But this definitely was not when San Diego's story has begun. More than 10,000 years, uh, Native Americans used to live on this land. And there's really no written record of that, but uh, there's tons of archeological record and especially in La Jolla area. So then the modern era started in September of 1542 when Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, a Portuguese navigator for Spain, landed here in the southern tip of Point Loma Peninsula and became the first European expedition to set foot on the west coast of the USA. So this is technically the birthplace of California and west coast uh, discovery. And every October they're doing reenactment of his landing. And this is 14 feet and 14,000 pound statue of Cabrillo at a gorgeous Point Loma. The statue has a quite interesting story in 19, and weird a little bit. In 1913, President Wilson signed an order to build a heroic statue of Cabrillo, but nobody was commissioning it. Eventually, Portuguese government decided to commission the statue of Cabrillo and donate it to the United States. The statute was intended for a Golden Gate International Exposition in San Francisco, but it arrived too late. So it was stored in some garage in Oakland until one of the state senators got in a fight and eventually they all agreed that it's going to be transferred to San Diego. And even after they did, it was uh, stored in some naval base and uh, away from public view. And only in 1949, 35 some years later, after Wilson signed the order, they installed the statue here in Point Loma. And that's not it. So the statue was made out of um, sandstone and it was deteriorating pretty quickly. And eventually they had to create a new replica of it out of limestone and uh, it was reinstalled here already in like late 18, 1980s. The park has absolutely breathtaking views all around and excellent hiking trails. Amazing. And 
the most amazing thing ever is that you get to see the most beautiful sunsets here. You get to see the skyline of downtown San Diego. If it's super, super clear, you can actually see Tijuana. And this area is the very first whale watching lookout point in the world. And in this area, I believe they are mig whales migrating all year round. And I am going to post a chart for you when which whales migrating when. Also, at the highest point of the park, there's an old Point Loma lighthouse with absolutely breathtaking views. It was built in 1850s using the most high-tech lens of the time from France. At dusk, the keeper would climb the winding stairs and lit the oil lamp. And in a clear weather, the light was visible for 25 miles. They stopped operating it in less than 30 years because fog and low clouds often obscure the light. San Diego is now the eighth largest city in the country, but you would never feel that. It's broken down in different communities of different cultures, different times, and also different interests. All of them are equally cool. There's a big military community. You can find all kind of military and war museums here. There's a huge marine science community, art, history, old town. There's a gas lamp quarter that hosts 94 historic buildings of 1860s and so much more. We are in Little Italy. It's another neighborhood in San Diego. And we're here for lunch at Iron Fish and Oyster. Food in San Diego is absolutely amazing and this one promising to be amazing too. Little Italy has been around since 1920 and has its roots in the city's once very profitable tuna industry. Now you find here tons of restaurants and bakeries and bars. And Iron Fish and Oyster is not Italian, but it is in Little Italy. And I love fish and it's led by Michelin star chef. So win-win. what I'm talking about. <laughs> it used to be a warehouse that was once occupied by a metal fabricator. There are some very industrial details. The frosted bulbs and subway tiling, a steel trellis and a great atmosphere. You know how they have Disney World in Florida? Well, here in San Diego they have like all kinds of museum world in Balboa Park and you can easily spend here a week and it's amazing. It's a giant space with dozens of museums and performance venues and gardens. Each museum is independently run and basically Balboa Park and parking and all the trails and gardens are free to get in. But uh, once you want to go into museum then you have to pay for it to get in. There is a tram that takes you around and there is an art museum and photography and natural history, aerospace. They have museum of man about humanity and its achievements throughout the years. And the world's famous San Diego Zoo too. It's like a small cultural city here and also the architecture, these beautiful buildings date back early 1900s. There's such a mix of styles, Spanish colonial and Baroque and Gothic. It's truly a special place. And then there's the Old Globe Theatre. It's modeled after Shakespeare era Old Globe Theatre in London. And I've been there like a billion years ago when I was in London and I had pretty bad English at the time and especially with our accents I could not understand anything but it was amazing experience so I am definitely looking forward to come and see the performance here. To describe San Diego I would say it is unique, smart and inclusive. Every person with any kind of interest will find community here in San Diego. It's big, but there's such order to it. Very easy to navigate and find a place you love, a place where you belong. 
Well, this is it you guys. The day was amazing and I hope you enjoyed San Diego. Please like the video if you liked it and please subscribe and follow me on Instagram. Here's my handle. All the links are in the description below. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.